Let me pray, and then I just want to share a few thoughts uh, with you in the time that we've got left over here this morning. So, Father, we thank you for this morning. God, thank you for worship, God. What a great opportunity. Lord, to just put aside every... There, there, this room would be full of cares and worries and thoughts and ideas and problems and issues. Father, we don't deny the reality of those things, but, Lord, at this moment, we deny them the reality. We deny them the power to take control of our thoughts and our imaginations. Lord, we deny them uh, the power... Lord, to consume us right now. Father, we want to fix our eyes on Jesus. Lord, we want to fix our attention on you, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to worship. God, I thank you for your church. Lord, thank you for the people in this room that have bowed their knee to you, Lord, that, that love you, God, this community, God, that we call the rise. And Father, we pray for every community, God, every church, every gathering around our region this morning. Father, would you bless their socks off, God, in Jesus' name. And Father, as we look at your word this morning, God, would you speak to each of us individually in a language that we would understand? Show us something we need to see, and let us hear something we need to hear, Father, in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. 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 Um, Yeah, look, I just got back fishing. So me and Ben Luca uh, went fishing. Started out, there was five of us to start with, and then one by one, the other guys dropped off like flies. So we had this beautiful four-bedroom Airbnb. We we had two bedrooms each that we could choose from. Um, We went up uh, north to a place called Agnes Water, 1770. And uh, did some fishing, caught a, a whole bunch of fish, about 75, 80 odd fish we caught while we were away. Not all keepers, of course, we threw back the legal ones, but we caught some uh, good ones that we could eat and so on. Um, we had a couple of little mishaps along the way, didn't we? A couple of little things that, you know, when, hey, anyone, when you go on a holiday, you plan things, don't you? You, you okay, we're going to stay here, we check in this date, we check out, we might do this on that day, this on this day, and so on. Uh, but how many of you know that, that man makes his plans, but whether it be God or something else, gets involved sometimes, and sometimes all of our plans don't go exactly how we thought they would go. And we had a couple of those moments. We had one, uh, one uh, incident where uh, we went up a creek. We didn't realise how, how quick the tide shifts up there, that, 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 that you, know, you go into a creek and there's this much water and it's awesome, and, but then when you come back out, there's like about two inches of water and sand everywhere, and you're wondering where the creek actually went. Um, and so we had a, a situation where we got caught on some uh, a little rocky patch there for a bit and then we, uh, went, then we got caught on sand and then we're walking through waters where they say don't walk in the waters, they're stonefish and at uh, one point I had an, a stingray tail flick up and hit me and that was the end of my walk and I was back in the boat like nothing else. I almost was like, Jesus, not quiet. I didn't quite walk on water, but I, I got out of that, that water in a hurry. And, uh, and then we made it out to the mouth of the river. Then we thought, look, we're going to have to probably sleep here now because it's dark. And the town we're going to is way out there. We're going to head out to sea and across. But um, the midges and, and everything were so thick and fierce. So we decided, no, no, we'll, we'll punch it out anyway. So we're bouncing along in pitch black and trying to watch any rogue waves that might come in. Anyway, we made it. We're here today. And another night, we took the boat into another creek and uh, had a great day, fun day fishing, and then went to start the engine to come home, and the motor wouldn't start, and all the batteries were flat, and thankfully, it was 800 metres from the only pier in the entire creek, praise God, so we got the oars out, and we paddled up, and we tied it off to this jetty, and there were three houses, the only three houses in the entire uh, 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 national park where the creek was, but nobody was home because they're holiday homes, and people only come there when they're fishing. So then we had to tie the boat up for the night and walk 15 kilometres through Yurimbala National Park in the dark with a headlamp in thongs walking through sand tracks. And uh, so again, you know, sometimes in life you choose your own adventure and sometimes the adventure chooses you. And so we had some of those instances where the adventures chose us. But here we are on the other side of it. And even though, you know, sometimes you go through things in life and you don't want to go through them. Amen? If, you knew, if, I, if we woke up that morning and knew the batteries were going to die and that we were going to be walking through Yurimbla National Park through a little dirt track, 15 kilometres in thongs through sand at night time, I would have probably said, let's stay here and get fish and chips. But I didn't know that was going to happen. So we went ahead and we did it. So, so if, we, if we always knew what a journey was going to be like, if we knew all the outcomes in that, there'd be a lot of decisions we'd make differently, a lot of things we wouldn't step into. But how many of you know there's a lot of joy in the journey, isn't there? There can be a lot of joy in the journey, a lot of things we learn. And, 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 and sometimes we just want the destination, but, but there's something about the journey. There's something about the process as well that's really, really fulfilling and uh, builds stuff into our lives and so on. So anyway, it got me thinking. It did get me thinking about the journey of Arise. 
as a, as a gathering, as a church. How many of you are here from the old GSAC days? How many people are left from the GSAC days? There's a handful of us from the GSAC days. Uh, not many, not many leftovers from, uh, from our days at the Sports and Aquatic Centre up the road uh, in the, the, the beginning times. But um, you know, it's been a bit of a journey to get to where we are. But I was thinking about that uh, while we were away and we were going through our own little adventures. And I just felt encouraged to share something with us this morning. Um, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't claim to be a prophet. But I, I do want to share something this morning that I, 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 I feel like it's, all, it's a prophetic, uh, potentially a prophetic word for us as a, as a community of faith and uh, you know, where we are, where we're going and so on. So I just want to humbly submit some thoughts to you this morning. And while I, all I want out of this morning is I want you to, to listen, I want you to pray and ask God, where are you maybe in this process or are you in this process or are you not in this process or should you get involved in this process or what? Because how many of you believe that everyone in this room, you could have been born in 13th century China? You could have been, eh? You could have been born in 13th century China. Or you could have been born in, you know, uh, you could have been born in Jerusalem around the time of the death of Jesus. You could have been. No? You could have been. You, you could have been born in India in the 1900s. Um, Whatever your circumstance and situation is, for whatever reason, on what's the date today, by the way? 13th of October. Wow, hasn't this year gone fast? It's the 13th of October, 2024, and you're alive and breathing God's air. Amen? Not only are you alive and breathing God's air, but you're here. You're in the northern rivers of, of New South Wales, what I think is one of the most beautiful parts of our country. And there's a reason it talks about in the book of Acts, Paul, Paul says that you know, God ordained the times and the seasons and the boundaries of men. That's not just by chance that we happen to be here right now. There's a God-ordained purpose with our lives. Amen? Who believes that? There's a God-ordained purpose for me being alive today. And I also believe there's a God-ordained purpose for me being where I am today. There's a reason for it. And in the everyday run of life, we can lose the excitement or the awe of that sense that, hey, life has purpose and has meaning beyond just what I can see, taste, touch, feel and smell. It has purpose and meaning in God beyond just making a few dollars so that I can provide a life for my family. It has purpose and meaning beyond just uh, a building, a, you know, maybe building a reputation in your field of endeavour or whatever that might be. There's a, there, there's a purpose and a reason beyond all of that. And, and that purpose and that reason has something to do with God. Amen? It has something to do with, with God. We, we have this word history, and, and, and I'm sure you've heard it before, but in reality, history is his story. That's what it is. It's God's story. It has a beginning, it's going to have an end, but then it will go on beyond the end into eternity. And anywhere along that timeline, from the time that, that Adam and Eve were created to the time that Jesus returns, I could have been pinned on that board at any point, but I was pinned on that board now. And so there's this sense, I hope, even within everybody, I hope within yourself, there's a sense of, of almost divine fingerprint in who you are and where you are in life right now. And I want to talk a little bit about just something that I, I think God's been speaking to me and, and I, I feel like it is something for the church. So if you're a visitor here, uh, hopefully this resonates with you in your own world or your own space. But if you are somebody that, that has, has put their roots down in a rise and this is your place, then I want you to, to, to be open and open up your heart and listen to the Lord and just see what God might want to say to you this morning. In Joshua chapter 18, verse 1 to 3, I just want to... Uh, bounce off these three verses. Joshua chapter 18, uh, verse 1 and 2. Start with, it says this. It says, The whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. The country was brought under their control. Verse 1, the country was brought under their control. So you can, as you can imagine, Israel went on a great adventure, didn't they? They were captives in Egypt. They were in bondage and slavery. And Moses, God sends them a deliverer. Moses sets them free. They go on a wild wild ride out of Egypt and into this land called the Promised Land. And uh, we all know the story. They wandered around for 40 years. Some of them grumbled and complained. So one generation missed out. But God, God's plan was going to be God's plan. You're going to get there. If you don't want to go there, that's fine. We'll save it for your kids and your kids will get to go there. 
And so the next generation got the opportunity to go into the promised land. Two people from the previous generation made it in uh, with them. Who were those two people? Anyone know? Caleb and Joshua. Exactly, Caleb and Joshua. Two faithful men who had a different spirit to all the grumblers and the complainers who said, this cannot be done. They said, what do you mean it can't be done? God said it's been done. God didn't say, go and check out the land and see if we're strong enough to take it. God said, go and check out the land I have given you. And Caleb and Joshua trusted God. That's faith. That's faith. The others grumbled and complained, looked at their own lack, looked at their own inability and so on. And in the end, God said, well, that's fine. It's your choice to not want to extend faith and step into the future with me. You'll miss out, but we're going to make sure that that the next generation get a chance. Caleb and Joshua, you two guys can come on in as well. What an adventure it must have been for them to go on that. So the whole assembly of Israel gathered at Shiloh, set up the tent of meeting there. The country was brought under their control. So this has been a long journey, a long process. Finally, it says the country is brought under their control. But there were still seven Israelite tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. So there are 12 tribes. And, and here they are. They've got to this point where they've set up the tent of meeting. They've kind of stopped. They're, they're thinking we've done it. But it says, but there were still seven tribes that had not received their inheritance. Still seven tribes that hadn't got the land or weren't living in the land that God had said to them all these years ago, I've set this land apart for you. So they'd taken some of the land God had for them, but not all of the land that God had for them. They'd taken some of it. It was this good. You got some of it, but they hadn't taken all of it. They were walking in some of what God called them to do, but they were not walking in all of what God had called them to do. It's good. It's good to be walking in some of what God's called you to do. But the point is, we don't want to just walk in some of what God has called us to. We want to walk in all. Amen? Who wants to be in all? I, I want to be in all. I, I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to live this Christian life just having some of what God has for me. I want all of what God has for me. I don't want to just be kind of what God wants me to be. I want to be all that God has called me to be. I, I want everything that, 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 that God has in store for me. I want to position my life in such a way that I can receive and run into and grab a hold of and be involved in and take the opportunities that are there for me. I want all of it. I want, to be, I want to be a little bit spiritually greedy when it comes to God. Amen? I want to be a little greedy with the things of God. I want, I want to experience God to the best of my ability this side of heaven that it's possible for me to experience and to know and to walk with the Lord. That's what I want. So one commentator, he put it this way. He says, apparently the remaining tribes had grown complacent. They were satisfied with nomadic life in the fertile land of Ephraim and Manasseh and were not eager to be involved in the warfare required to claim their own territory. So they they kind of set up shop and gone, look, we're kind of comfortable here. There's a few battles to go to really claim and move into the land where we need to go, but we're quite happy where we are. Anyone ever feel like that? We fought a few battles, you've won a few things, and, and, and you just can't... And I understand this. Maybe they were just tired. They ever get tired? Maybe they, maybe they just felt like they'd, they'd given everything they could give to the cause, and there was nothing left. And I think God understands that. You know? I think, I think God, God understands that we are finite human beings. But it's interesting when you go into the Old Testament, it actually mentions elsewhere in Joshua that at a certain point that, that, that God left certain nations in certain lands so that the Israelites would learn how to fight because some of them, the next generation, had never known war. So there's something about fighting that God wants within us. There's something about, uh, it's like, a, anyone ever run a marathon and they reckon you, 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 you kind of hit a wall and then you push through it? Ben, you would know about this. You hit a wall and then you push through that wall and, 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 and you get this second wind. I wouldn't know about it. I hit the wall, I flop like nothing. Uh, like a dead fish in the back of a boat. Bah, that's over for me. I, I run, I love to run, but I'll run no more than 15 metres at a time. Um, 15 up, 15 back, 15 up, 15 back, then sub, I'm off for a bit. You know, get my breath back but um so i understand it and i think these guys would have been tired and a lot of things were probably going on for them and here's the thing they were also getting comfortable with where they were and what they had it was time for some god-ordained holy spirit inspired agitation to happen in the lives of these people amen god-ordained holy spirit agitation and so here's what happens in verse three so joshua said to the israelites how long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you. 
It's like the Holy Spirit came and, 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 and began to shake them up again. And say, hey, you've pitched your tent and you're relaxing and you're, you're pretty happy because you've taken a fair bit of land and you've taken a fair bit of ground and you're kind of, for lack of a better word, maybe you're resting a little bit on your laurels and hey, you've achieved some things. Let's high five you. Let's, sh- let's celebrate the victories and so on. But hey, guys, you're, you're relaxing in that where you are and you're feeling like you've made it, but you might feel like you've made it, but I told you you've made it over here there's way, way more for you. You've got to get up, shake off the dust, get the sleep out of your eyes, put some water on your face, pick up your backpack, pick up your whatever, your water jug, pack up the tent, and let's keep walking forward because there's so much more that I have for you. Don't settle for what's less than what I have. This is what he's saying to them. And, and so Joshua, by, by the Holy Spirit, begins to agitate them and stir them up out of their slumber. Wake up, you sleeper, and let's keep marching forward because we're not there yet. Amen? We're not there yet. Now here, what a great question. How long will you wait? How long will you wait? What a great question. It, 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 it's, it's like, you know, how many of you, how many, sometimes we feel like we're waiting on God. Anyone ever feel like that? I'm waiting on God. Yeah? Well, sometimes I wonder whether we, we're sitting back doing nothing, thinking we're waiting on God, but maybe God's waiting on us. Maybe God's waiting on you to do something. Maybe God's waiting on a first step. Maybe God's waiting on, 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 on a, a first bit of movement or action on your part. Maybe we're sitting back waiting for him, but is it possible that he could be waiting for us? Are you sitting back waiting for the right time? Well, sometimes the right time's never, amen? Anyway, they go, I'm just going to wait for the right time. I'll tell you something about the right time. The right time is a choice. It's not a place. I don't know if I've, you know, I am used to think, you know, uh, when the, our, our kids were young, we'd just wait for the right time because I'm busy with the kids. And then the kids grew up and then I realised they're more of a handful um, than they were when they're young. So I'm just waiting for the right time. And then they left home and I thought, right, now we've got free time, but now they've got these stupid things called mobile phones and email and, and, and now it's, it's more busy and they're always on, so, so it's not the right time. And then wait till we can get a house and then we got a house and then it's not the right time. And then wait till we do this. And, and it's like the right time never, ever, seems to be now. The right time is always some place up into the future, but nobody can put a pin mark on where in the future is it going to be. We just know the right time's up there somewhere. Well, one day we're going to get to the end of our day and go, there's no time left up there, so I must have missed the right time back there somewhere. Where did I miss the turn off? That stupid GPS lady didn't talk to me. I punched in the right time, turn left at the next roundabout. You'll be at your destination 400 metres on the right, you know? We're waiting for the right time, or we, we were waiting for a less busy season of life or a more convenient moment. The one thing I know about time is this time doesn't wait for anybody. It doesn't stop rolling on. It can't, because that's the way God ordained it. Time keeps on ticking, tick, tick, ticking into the future. What a great question. How long will you wait? And here's a great thought you could be waiting for something God's already given you. How many times might we have thought we were waiting on God when in fact God was actually waiting on us? God was waiting on us to get up, waiting on us to move forward, waiting on us to give, waiting on us to pray, waiting on us to put our hands up, waiting on us to say that word yes over here and no over there. And what a terrible reality. You could be settling for way less than God's calling you to. You could be settling for way less than God's calling you to. Now, I feel like this is the heart of God for a rise at the moment. I feel like God's saying to us, it's time to get up and begin to take possession of all that I have called you to. We've got a lot of new people here, so a lot of you don't know the story of how we landed in this place. So I just want to quickly share with you the story of how we landed in this building. We started out at the uh, uh, Sports and Aquatic Centre, the GSAC there. Um, uh, Arise started as a combination, uh, a a joint uh, plant by Seacoast Church in Ballina, Heartlands Church in Casino and um, uh, Harbour Church, I think they were called, in Coffs Harbour. So they, they, the national movement uh, leaders felt like God wanted INC to plant a church here in Lismore. So these three churches started coming up with a renter crowd every Sunday at the GSAC. And it was amazing. Like, I see the photos of them that, that first month of services. It was huge. Like, wow. And me and my wife were, at that point, we, we'd been pastoring another movement. Uh, we resigned from that movement. And then for seven years, I we uh, was working as a manager at a Dan Murphy's in Ballina. And uh, our kids were still young and, and, and growing up. 
And then one day we got approached by uh, Pastor Jim and Vanice White. Jim was here last week. Uh, approached us and said, look, would you guys pray? We're, we're trying to plant a church up in Lismore, but we need someone to take it on. Would you guys pray about taking that on? And we both thought straight away, no way, been there, got the T-shirt, got the scars, been hurt by it all, don't want to touch that thing again, you know? Uh, but anyway, we, we did what, 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 what you do, and we, we, we sat with God and prayed. And, and long story short, we eventually felt like God said, no, this is, this is right, you need to do this. So we came up here, and I came up a couple of times and just randomly preached to the, to the massive renter crowd. It was awesome. And then um, I think it was about 12 weeks uh, into it, uh, we, we got back to them and said, yep, we feel it's right, we'll take it on. So I remember the Sunday we drove up here to be prayed over by uh, Jim and Venice and released as pastors into the church. And uh, so we drove up here and we drove in from Balnor. We were living in Balnor at the time, up the road, came up Holland Street there, got to this roundabout just here. And instead of turning right, when I got to the roundabout that first Sunday, I felt like clearly the Holy Spirit said to me, turn left. And I had no idea why. I don't know Lismore. I've lived in Balnor most of my life. Balnor people don't come to Lismore. <laughs> okay? Now we live here. We're locals now, right? That's, that's, we, we never came up there. We had the beach and everything down there. We only come up for church. But um, anyway, we came up and I turned down this road and that was a dead end street just there. This road wasn't always there. That's only opened up recently. And, and we turned left and, and I stopped the car on the opposite side of the road there where that um, electronic space is, that building there. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, stop. And he said, this is where I'm going to give you this space up here for, for, for your gathering." At this point, we're meeting in the Sports and Aquatic Centre. So anyway, I'm, I'm looking at that building over there and then said to Jackie, well, look, this is what we feel like God's saying. We need to pray. So that began a ritual. Every Sunday morning, we would drive before going to the GSAC. We would come to the roundabout, turn left, park there. We would put our hands out and go, God, that's ours. We claim it. Then get in the car and go. And then one day, I remember getting out of the car and I felt like the Holy Spirit with great grace, mercy and love said to me, turn around, dummy. <laughs> and so I turned around and here's this building. No, nobody had rented this building, had been sitting here vacant and empty, and uh, it, was, it was amazing. We, we hadn't even seen it, hadn't even noticed it was here. And then from that point on, we went, oh, that's our building. So we started praying over that. It was probably a, a couple of years before, uh, it, would, it would have been about two years maybe, two, three years, Luke, Luke, Luke would be good with the maths, yeah. Two to three years later, cut a long story short, um, we, we, we contacted the real estate because I saw a for rent sign out the front. And uh, the real estate said, here's what it is, blah, 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 here's how much. Uh, I said, look, we can't afford that, but would the owners be prepared to put a wall? So originally we said, would you put a wall straight down the middle here and we'll just have that little section there. And um, so the owners, the owners uh, told the real estate, yeah, we're happy to do that. What do, they, you know, what do they want it for? And then we told the real estate, well, we want it for a, a church. And they went, oh, okay. So we'll send you the paperwork. They sent us the paperwork. We sent it off to our head office because INC have a great structure. There are people above us that uh, make sure we don't make dumb financial decisions or um, you know, pastoral decisions and so on. We're accountable. So we sent it off to them. They got a copy of our, our uh, uh, tithes and offerings and they said to us, no, you can't afford it. And we went, okay. We fiddled with it a little bit, sent it back to them. And not fiddled as in changed things. We just went, sat and looked at it again. What can we cut back? Sent it off again. And again, they said, we can't, you, you can't afford it. We won't do it. So I wrote them a letter and said, look, here's the thing. All I can do is give you figures on paper. I can't give you the faith of my heart. I had a real gift of faith at that moment in life that I just knew that I knew that I knew that God wanted us here. Never had that gift of faith uh, uh, before or since for a particular thing. And so I sent this letter off and said, I can't give you the faith in my heart, but God wants us in that building. And our movement, they're a great movement. And they wrote back and said, well, if you really feel that strongly, we'll back you. And they signed the lease for the thing. So I ring the real estate and go, send the lease forms through to head office. They're going to sign it. They hang up. Two minutes later, my phone rings. I pick it up, and there's this lady, and she says, are you Alan? I said, yes. Yeah. She said, are you trying to rent the building in Oliver? I said, yep. Yeah. She said, um, do you want to put a church in there? I said, well, yes, we do. She said, can, I meet, can me and my husband meet with you and your wife tomorrow? We went, oh, okay, yep. So we finished work, jumped in a car, drove up here to Lismore, went to the house where the owners are, and as soon as we walked in the door, pretty much the first thing they said was, tell me your testimony of how you came to faith in Jesus. Okay, so we began to share our testimony and story of how we came to faith. And then they said, let us tell you a story. I said, we, uh, my husband's a builder. And they said he built this, we, he had a, a, some flat time with not many jobs going on. So they built, he got his workers together and they built this building. And he said, the workers got quite creative, you know, if you notice out the front. It's not like a standard building. They put this sort of 
high roofs over the doors and they painted a bit blue and orange. That wasn't us, that was all done. And, and at the end of it, after they'd done it and they were packing up their tools, one of the workers went past the owner and patted him on the back and said, well, there's another one for your portfolio. And he said, at that moment, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, is that what your life's about, just building a portfolio? So he went home and said to his wife, here's, here's what happened. I had this moment with God where God said, is that what... So long story short, they made the decision. They prayed for this building and they said, we dedicate this building to the work of God. Now they were thinking that a mechanic or panel beater would come on in and they would take the money and just give it to missions or something like that and not make money off it. They had no idea that in God's mind, he said, no, I'm going to plant a church up here because I want a gathering of my people to be right here on the hill in Ganelaba. And so anyway, after meeting with them, they said, look, we're not, we, we won't put a wall up. We won't just give you that. We'll give you the whole thing that lays in this whole building we're in now for the same price of half of that because this is what we believe that God wants you to do. They don't come to our, our fellowship. They're not a part of our fellowship. They're part of another one. They're wonderful people. They don't um, get involved in, in things here. They just, they just, they're just excited and trust that you know, God is doing something here and, and it's been an amazing uh, relationship. Not only that, we put our rent across into an account uh, so every week we pay rent on, on this uh, premise and what they said is let's just put the money in that account and here's what we're going to do is we're going to get together with you guys every now and then we're going to pray and ask the Lord where should we give the money to. So even though we pay rent, we really don't pay rent. We're investing in the kingdom of God with the finances that come through this place. So it's a win-win, win-win-win situation, right? Um, and then what happened was there was a gym next door, right? And we started to grow and we thought we need a bit more space. And there was a gym there and I thought, uh, you know, my, my initial thought was, oh God, just kick him out. We want the space. That's my, my unsanctified side of me. But then the other side of me went, hang on, no, no, that's wrong. What I should do is we should pray that God so blesses his business that he outgrows it and he has to go. And so we did. And I remember one Sunday morning, some of you might remember, we stood here and we prayed together as a congregation, Lord bless his socks off, man. Give, boom, his business. Anyway, it was only a few weeks later, he came and knocked on the door and said to me, Alan, are you guys thinking of moving out of here? And I said, no, mate, we're pretty settled. He said, well, I'm going to have to move because my business has taken off and we need another place. So he moved to better pastures and his business took off as well. So then we got that place. And then you all know the story. Recently, we've been able to secure the little building just at the back of the car park there as well that we want to set up and do some kids' church stuff uh, over there. Uh, and there's a few other things in the pipeline that we'd love to do. I'm saying all that to say this. We are here for a reason. We're not just here because, hey, Arise Church wanted to get out of the GSAC. We outgrew it. Let's get on realestate.com. Let's just find an industrial shed somewhere so that we can go and rent another place and move into another building. We're here because I believe with all my heart, from day one, God ordained for whatever reason and purpose that there would be a gathering, a fellowship of his people right here on the crest of this hill, way before he knew it was going to be a thoroughfare, way before we knew that there were going to be another couple of thousand, uh, I think it's two between two and 3,000 homes that are going in just over in the paddock and over the hill, Richmond Hill. This section over here has been uh, set up over here. All this farmland is going to be residential and stuff as well. There are so many houses and homes and families that are going to be moving in to this area in years to come. And God knew that before anybody else knew that. And God said, I want a fellowship right smack bang there on top of the hill. It's exciting. I find it exciting. To, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's exciting. Praise God. Praise God. So we've been planted here by God for a reason. And that reason is to be a city on a hill. It's to be a light that cannot be hidden. It's to be a community of people who stand with the Apostle Paul when he says in Romans 1.16, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everybody who believes. Who's with me on that one? Yeah. Now here's the challenge. If you're called to be a part of this gathering, then you're actually called to be a part of our march forward. So I feel like God's saying, you know, you guys have you've done some great things and you've taken some land, it's awesome, but hey, you haven't taken everything I put you here for. You're not doing everything that I've called you guys to do yet. I placed you here for a reason and a time. And my, our goal has always been, we want to hand this church over eventually one day to some of these young guys that are running around now going to be pastoring and leading and, and preaching and prophesying and, and, and starting works. And I can't wait for that day to be able to hand that over to them. But we want to hand over to them something that is moving full steam ahead in the direction that God wants it to be going. Amen? We want to hand it over to them with momentum. We want to hand it over to them where they've got... Uh, you know, I, I, I'm always uh, flabbergasted by uh, Gideon in, in Judges chapter 6 where, where, where God says, uh, the angel comes, and Gideon says to the angel of the Lord, where are all the miracles our fathers told us about? Uh, in other words, it would have been better had he said, where are all the miracles our fathers showed us? 
Like our fathers weren't just talking about things that happened in the past. Our fathers were doing things, involved in things, engaged in things, and they showed us all this stuff that you can do, God. Now we're excited about what you can do, and we want to be a part of that. No, no, they said, where's all the stuff they told us about? In other words, it had stopped well before it got to Gideon. And, and, and the fathers, they told us about the things that he did. Oh, I want to show this next generation the things that God is doing right now. What is God doing now? What can the people of God do if they combine their efforts, work together as a body? What can we achieve in a community? What mark can we leave? How can we make the, you know, Trump has this make, what is it, what's his slogan, make America great again? Or what was that thing he said? You know, oh, I want to make Jesus great again, you know? Because we're living in a culture where, 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 I was watching this show the other day, Clarkson's Farm. Anyone ever seen Clarkson's Farm? You know, the, the Top Gear dude. Anyway, someone introduced me, somebody, not mentioning anyone, Ben, but somebody introduced me to Clarkson's Farm the other day, and there's a scene where Jeremy fills a pond with uh, little um, uh, trout, and then he says, I am Moses, and this young 21-year-old guy called Caleb goes, who's Moses? I thought, you know what? That's not just a gimmick for TV, that's actually true. There's a younger generation, and anyone here that's working in the schools, Elaine and others that might work in the schools, you would know that there's a generation of kids, they don't know who Moses is, who Noah is, who Jesus is, they don't understand the gospel story anymore because it's being squashed down, removed from the public spaces, uh, anything to do with Jesus is being taken away. We're becoming so, uh, so humanised and, and, and undeified and I think we're here for a reason. We're here to, oh, I kind of want to reverse that trend, if that makes sense. I want to play my part with this tiny drop in the bucket called life that I have anyway, to, to make sure that to the best of my ability that I'm running forward and taking every corner and square inch of land that God has for me to take. And I think that's why we're here. We've said it from day one. If you want to go to a gathering or a fellowship where you just get to sit there and feel good about yourself, I mean, I want you to feel good about yourself, don't get me wrong, but if you just want to sit and be comfortable and not be challenged and not be encouraged to grow or deal with your stuff or find your giftings and calling or step out in faith and begin to... If you want a place where you don't want any of that, this is definitely the wrong gathering for you to be in. It's the wrong gathering to be in. We love you and we want you here, but if you, if you don't want to be challenged or agitated or, or poked a little bit, then this is definitely the wrong place for you. If you just want to love Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and that's it and keep it to yourself and not allow, as, as it says in John, that rivers of living water will flow from your belly. The whole, if you just want the Holy Spirit to fill you and stay in you, awesome, praise God, but it's not the right place because we want to agitate and poke some holes in your belly so that that spirit that fills you out of your belly flows rivers of living water into the lives of other people in the community around us that's why we are here that's why we're here all right so i hope you want to stick around i hope you want to stick around but here's the thing if you call to this gathering then you've got a part to play in our march forward into everything god's put us here for see the church is called three things i had this thought the other day i'm not saying it was god but maybe it was the church is called to have impact in the community but you can't have impact until you have influence in the community. And you can't have influence until you have involvement. You have involvement first in the community, and then as you start to have involvement, you begin to get influence. As you begin to get influence, then you can have impact. My question I think about all the time about Arise Church is this. If we packed up and didn't come back to next Sunday, and it was all over, would anybody in the community miss us? Would anybody in the community even notice we weren't here? So I think that's the challenge for us as a community now. Yeah, I, I think what we do here is great. I, 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 it's wonderful what we do on a Sunday, our, our, our gatherings. It's wonderful, great worship. I, hopefully, hopefully the preaching's good. Um, the community is good. We're doing things. We've got connect groups up and running and so on. But I think God's saying, hey, you know what? It's almost like the foundation, the concrete is set in the foundation. It's time to build some things now. It's time to begin to get up and put your hand to the plow and start to get involved in some things. And let's start to move towards having impact, not just in here in the lives of believers, but how can we begin strategically to think about how do we get out there and start having a bit of an impact out there. I've got much more that I want to share, but I'm going to leave it at that. And I'll, 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 I want to pick this up next week and just talk about a few more ideas and things about that. But uh, what, 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 I, what I want you to do th uh, this morning, all I want you to do is this. I'm going to get the band back. I want to finish with that song, Great Awakening. Yeah, we can pray for a revival till the cows come home. Amen? And I don't even know what cows coming home means. I'm still trying to work that out. Still trying to work that one out, but I know people say it. We can pray for revival. We can believe for revival. And I think we should. 
But, but he, 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 he's, he's one of, my, he's one of, he's one of the, the things that we need to be careful of with prayer. Sometimes prayer can be a shield we hide behind to do nothing else. Don't get me wrong, I'm 100% into prayer. We need to be praying. If I was to ask you seriously right now, in terms of the lost and the dying and those that don't know Christ, who, who in your world, is there a person in your world that you pray for daily? that doesn't know Jesus, and you pray for them to come to faith. You pray 2 Corinthians 4, for the eyes, that, 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 that the, the blinders on their eyes would be taken away, they would see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Is that where our heart is at? Are we thinking lost? Are we thinking there are people that don't know Christ? Are we going, gimme, gimme, gimme? Are we, uh, is our heart bent more towards consuming whatever it is that the Lord wants to give, or is it starting to tip towards contributing to what the Lord is wanting to do? Where's our heart at? And I want everybody that calls this place home, I want you to spend some time this week and I want you to pray. And I want you to ask God, where am I at with that? Now, this, this is great, Lord. I'm grateful for all the things that you've done. But Lord, am I the person that's ready to be challenged, to be agitated, to put my hand to the plow, to take a step forward and to engage and be involved in whatever it means to move forward, God, and do something in this community? I want you to pray. I want you to ask God. Search your heart. Search your heart. Because we're, we're just at the beginning. I honestly believe that as a church, we are just at the beginning of what God has called us to do. Well, I'm, I'm standing here looking at uh, some, there's only a few faces here I don't know at the moment. A few guests, great to have you guys with us if you're a guest. But I can tell you now, I, I believe this church has quality people. You know, we know some of you more than others. And, and everybody has a story. Everybody has been on a journey and is on a journey. And, and, and some people feel like I can dive in and contribute this much. Some people, for whatever reasons, go, oh, look, I, I can. It doesn't, uh, Jesus said a widow's might was a lot. The parable of the talents teaches me one thing. You now the parable of the talents, I've got five and three and one, whatever. The parable of the talents doesn't tell me just to do something because the guy that got one buried it that was something wasn't it he did something it tells me to, to, to do something fruitful be fruitful be fruitful I got one life and one shot at this and I can't change the world and I'm, I'm over all the Pentecostal hype of let's change the world for Jesus I'm not into the hype but I do think that I can play a small role in changing Ganelaba all this more. I do, I do think that we can play a small part in, in changing the spiritual environment, the atmosphere and the culture of the community in which God has called us together and placed us together and said, hey, this is your home. This is your home. So I want to challenge each of us to pray this week. Come next week with an open heart because I want to, I want to challenge us a little further next week. hope that's okay. People go to churches for all different kinds of reasons, and that's all right. Some people go to be cheered up. Hey, I had a bad week. Make me happy. That's good. Some people come to be built up. The world's beat me down. Can you build me up? That's awesome. It's great. But we want to get to a place where we come to grow up. Grow into all that Christ has called us to. Amen. Why don't we stand together? I want to pray for us. Um, if you need to leave, please feel free to leave. We have tea and coffee next door so don't forget through them big doors there that's our little space as well and we've got some tea and coffee there next door feel free to go and grab that um, we, I'm going to get these guys to lead us in that song Great Awakening again I don't know about you but for me that song is like a I feel like it's a we're in a season where that song is, is not to be sung as a song but it's to be spoken into the, into the heavenlies as a, as a prophetic declaration that God we want you to move in our nation again God Father we need you to do something amazing in our country God Father it is we, 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 can, we can do all the stuff we can do in the natural but without the breath of God on that stuff it's just another thing being done I don't want to be a part of another thing being done I want to be a part of something that God is breathing life in and doing so Father we thank you for this morning Lord we thank you for your word God I thank you for uh, uh, the story of the Israelites and I thank you for this challenge from Joshua Lord and God, I, I pray that, Father, if you are, if this is what you're saying to us, Lord, and I, I think it is, God, if you're saying to us, get up, there's more land to be taken, there's more things to be done, 
then Father, I pray that you would confirm that in the hearts of the people that call this place home. And Father, I pray that you would, uh, uh, Lord, you would begin to speak to us about our contribution. And what do we do? How do we get engaged in that? How do we, what do we got to do, Father? Joshua didn't get up and walk into those lands himself. He called a whole nation, a community, and said, we're going to do this together. He didn't just say to each individual nation, well, that plot over there is yours, you go and take it. No, 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 they all went together and took it. And so, Father, I just pray, Holy Spirit, would you just do what you, you, you want to do in this place, in our hearts. Father, turn us into that bright, shining light, that city on a hill that cannot be hidden. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen, amen. Let's go.